Next up, removing all these, you know how to do that. The chain tensioner, these oil pipes, and all of these bolts, and then this up, this thing off. Yeah, man. In the meantime, these are both chains here. I'm gonna pour some gasoline on top of them. Uh, this is a trick I know from uh, the elders. Gasoline just cleans the fuck out of these chains. Like, it just cleans rust. I don't know how it does it, but it does it. I've just poured clean gasoline on it. It's already. See what I mean? It cleans everything, man. Now, I don't know if uh, this is because the engine, this engine is in way better condition than mine and it has been used probably regularly uh, but I've managed to take all these studs out with a technique that I didn't... it's like a bit of an improvement on last time so what I'm doing is putting a nut in by the way, using the same two nuts to take all of them out. So putting a nut in and then one of these washers, one of these, yeah. And then that facilitates the nuts like getting tight one on another. And I can just take the studs out. I'll try this technique on the last uh, stud on the previous engine, my old engine and see if it works but so far so good and so far so good this is in good condition so I'm happy alright also just so I don't get messed up the bike, this engine, how I dismantled it is with the front down there so I've laid out the parts exactly how I took them off including these and including this so when I take the shims out and these whatever they're called I'll put them in the same order and I'll keep this as it is so I don't get messed up prior to taking the cams out I actually measured the clearances and they were all like 0 0.10 which is good I've got measuring shims of 0 0.10 and 0 0.20 is the next one 0 0.10 was going in 0 0.20 on all of them it wasn't going in so that's perfect that's the maximum service limit it says in the manual the cat came to help me with the screws for now she's not playing with them which is good all right it's raining it's more like england now now, really important, I don't have the GoPro with me, so the sound won't be stereo and nice. It might be nice, but not stereo. So, I had a, I reached a dilemma on how to take this off. Now, a lot of people were saying, leave the bike in gear, blah, blah, blah. Which, obviously, I can't do because the engine is out. So, what I did is probably not the official way, probably not the recommended way. But it worked for me. Uh, when you reach this stage, there's no biking gear. There's no none of that options. Uh, what I did was bundle the chain in there. I know it's not the best way, but it worked. So shut the fuck up. So I put the chain in there. This, because the chain is sitting there, the chain is kind of holding it. And then if you have an impact wrench, then that's gonna do your life easier. I didn't, so I just fucking forced it out. So this was held by the chain, and I used the 17 mil with a ratchet wrench, and that pulled it off. Now, the second dilemma is how the fuck do you get this off of the shaft? Uh, and I've watched some beautiful people on YouTube and they said 
you can get like a so this is the bolt you can get a smaller bolt cut it to the length you need my length for the 250 GS250 Suzuki FW really important the FW part my length is eight centimeters so you take one of these you cut it eight centimeters and then ah, oh, hold on I measured the wrong thing this is the off cut forget that so you take one of these you cut it to size this is the one that I actually used four and a half centimeters uh, make sure this is nice and round so you don't damage shit on the inside and then you shove this in here all nice it goes in there it clears the thread it clears this thread because it's way smaller in diameter than this thread you know so it doesn't damage anything use an off cut or a screwdriver to push it in there yeah and then the outside diameter is the exact outside diameter of this bolt this bolt is used to hold the swing arm now lucky for me i have a donor bike and i have one of these bolts from the other bike and you put this bolt in here this is gonna tighten against the the low bolt that you just cut and then you're gonna use the chain again for chain I'm gonna extra lubricate you for this to take it out that's it now the reason I did this is probably obvious from this footage uh, this engine spins up to 12 no 12,000 rpm yeah and I already had a catastrophic engine failure when a valve broke so at 12,000 rpm not if I'm not that I'm saying I'm gonna go that fast because probably I won't but at 12,000 rpm shit goes flying like it did here and all of this stuff is kind of coming off I don't know what's the cause of that but it is coming off I've just ripped this five minutes ago yeah I don't want shit to go flying at 12,000 rpm and then having another catastrophic failure and another one and fuck that no okay I'm back to the to the lab when you put these rings on just work your way around the first channel the second channel because otherwise I broke two already there's been a massive cursing session until now uh, the one that breaks is usually the second one so not the first ring, the second one breaks for some fucking reason, I don't know why this is the second one I broke that's the first one and it gives you no notice, it just goes snap, that's it so make sure you work your way around so put the thin one first and go first uh, gap and then the second and then the third don't rush it because they break and then it's over I found that the best way to put these back is first you put this ring so the copper looking one that looks like a bearing this one like a spacer so first you put this and then you put the fifth one you kind of work your way around uh, like on top of it the smaller the screwdriver you use the better I had a tiny screwdriver but I fucking lost it and it's pissing me off because because of that I broke two rings this one is too fat but yeah so first put the fourth ring on the spacer looking ring and then the steel looking ones
uh, I did some uh, some uh, some uh, I did some work off camera. Uh, I took the water pump up and washed it, but you know how to do that. And now I've disassembled it. It's got a pin here that goes in there. Uh, when you disassemble it, the fuck? Oh yeah. So when you disassemble it, you can just take a Stanley knife and a little hammer, put it in here between the gap, and like give it like some light taps, and it kind of pops off. It's got one of these O-rings well, that looks like the contour of the pump, and it's time to open up the gasket set. the gasket set, I'll see if this water pump o-ring is in here. If not, I'm gonna reuse that. Yeah, I've checked, there's no, there's no o-ring, so I'll have to reuse that. Wash it a bit, give it a clean, it should be alright. It is flat, but it's fat enough, I think. Right, I did loads of things off camera, but you've seen them last time. Uh, I dismantled this clutch. Um, on the previous engine, I got stuck on taking this nut out because when you spin it, this whole this flywheel thing spins. So, what I had to do is uh, make a tool because I have another engine. I've got sacrificial discs yeah so these are not the clutch discs they're like the steel plates in between the clutch discs so to make a tool I had to take an angle grinder and like cut in the middle of the screw shove this thing in here give it a weld and then that gives me an arm that holds this thing to not slip because that arm was going to hold this thing, you know what I mean? And then I'll go ahead and open that screw there, get to the oil pump, check that. I've already checked the water pump, it's okay. And then scrape the, the thingy, with the blade, the gasket, put a new one in, put the pistons in, or before that, Put a gasket on this puppy here. Put the starter motor back on. Assembly, really. It's so much work, I swear to God. If you do it by yourself, it's so much fucking work to completely restore this bike. Or any bike. This is a fairly simple bike, I think. I would imagine the more, more modern ones, they have more systems and shit. But I went through all the processes, man. Repaint the engine, repaint the frame, restore every bolt nut, and it's coming along really nicely now. Then, last stage, one of these is next. And then the side panels and the front panel. Front panel. And then new bike, yay! Welding machine. <coughs> I've actually built something really cool with this welding machine. I've built the trailer for to carry this bike. And spin on the motorway, everything's fine. It was initially one meter point five by 0 0.9 and I needed to extend it to fit the bike so I made it like 2 meters by 0 0.9 and used this 40 pound welder off eBay and a bunch of welding sticks basically made that and it's still working today it's really cool it's like half a year later it's nice I like this eBay cheap cheap eBay welder I'm not a professional welder though, but I'm trying.
this one here. New stick. Here it is. It's not the best tool. But fuck it, it's a one time use one. I need to file this thing down a bit because it doesn't fit properly. Doesn't really want to go in. See? I need to file that down. Hey. Alright, so this is done. What I gotta do now is see this clip here. I need to straighten it and then put a socket in. Take this mother out. Hammer. Flathead. After that, you can take a 22 mil socket. Just tap that in. It's raining. Yeah. Right now, when you take all these gaskets off, make sure don't you know minimal minimal shit drop in the actual engine bay. I was panicking earlier because uh, I thought, oh shit, if I drop anything, it's gonna go into the, all those intricate mechanical pieces. But then I realized there's a strainer down here, and the oil gets pumped in back into the oil filter, so all the shit kind of stays in the filter. That doesn't mean you have to go insane and make a mess in the engine bay. I'm just saying, if you drop some pieces there, it's alright, I mean, nothing's gonna die, but try not to, you know? It was a success, my tool worked, but it's all bent now, it doesn't matter, it did work. So that's off, and there's the nut, there's this thing, this washer, that's got a... So there's this washer here, the nut, the washer that has this bending here that goes in there, like that, on the inside. Then this comes off, the clutch basket, I believe it's called. It's got some thingies there, see? Some indentations. Alright, they probably fit in this, yes they do, in this shaft here. There's a big washer. This one here. Oh, come on. Can't take it out. One second. Flathead. It's got a thingy here. There you go. That's off. Behind it, there's a a bearing type of thing alright so hold on let's put these how I took them off one two three the washer was like that give it a wipe it was like that and then this bearing here it's like that now I don't know this if oh yeah it comes off no way it does come off now, now the thing is it comes together with the the wheel in the back but I don't think it should because I can't take it out hmm. this thing is so cool man I'm delving into it this is a bearing this. So this comes out like that. This is crazy, man. There it is. That's the bearing. Oil lubricated bearing. Just the, the inner shaft this is. So that goes in there. And then this comes off. Or it should... Oh, no, no, no. After that, you take the bearing, the actual bearing out. This is so crazy, man, how an engine is made. This is so cool. That's the bearing. Seems to be this. Oh no, this is the thick side here. 
thicker than that. Let's put it like that here. And now this thing should pop off. And it kind of does. It doesn't really. There's a nut there that's stopping it from coming out. That nut in here that I'm seeing, it's a, it's the actual corner rod, man. So, I need to spin this engine. And there we go. That should be it. And now this should pop off. And it does. Hey. Haha, <laughs> no way. It's got like a dual mass flywheel those springs that I was feeling when you twitch this left right this is so cool man I love this stuff alright let's lay down these parts here okay that's in here and then these go like that back in there now this is the oil pump in the manual it says something about an o-ring to check if the o-ring is there there's silicon here in the joint which makes me think that someone opened up this crankcase to do something about it maybe to service it, clean it or check it or something so I'm not gonna go further this is as much as I open, I'll open this to see that o-ring and if that's okay, then I'll put everything back in here. To take this out, circlip puller. It goes outwards, and then you push it out. You take it out. Just gonna leave it here for now. Right. The guys in the background are OCS, OCS, like a Romanian band. Now I took that circlip out. Uh huh. And this thing comes off, and then that's the oil oil pump. Now there's a pin here. This falls out also. Out. Out. And then 10 mil. I'll open these and see what's behind them. The screws that hold the oil pump are the same, same size. This washer here is actually two washers. A thick one and then a thin one, smaller diameter in the back and that's the main bearing that's so cool man I'm just gonna leave this here because I've got, I'm not messing with that alright and for putting back everything you put back everything the opposite way you took, took it off and give this a tight in the manual it says tightening torque 50 to 70 nanometers so, I'm going to choose just that here. That's... I'll go like 65. When you're done with that, make sure you bend this back in somehow. If you're using a nose plier, resist the temptation to grab from the middle here. Because there's some kind of pump going in there this shaft here and if you wreck it you wreck it this thing goes in with this thread like that um, yep and now put the discs back on uh, note to self and everybody else watching uh, there's a clutch disc going straight on this aluminum that's how it starts yeah, and it ends with a clutch disc on the other side that goes on top here. You know those things that you read in the manual of after you tighten all the volts? It says you need to put oil on the clutch um, discs, which I didn't. So I'm gonna have to take these off again, put oil on the clutch disc.
might see that it's uh, beginning to become a daytime now. Uh, I did a long night, so I didn't sleep. I was working on it. Yeah, I did a long night on it, but the first part of the engine, the crankcase, is on the bike. So, what I did was spend shitloads of time cleaning stuff, painting stuff. Cleaning the seals from here, I took out the oil sump, so that went off, cleaned everything, changed the gasket, uh, then I took off the oil filter, cleaned everything, swapped the oil filter. Um, with this, this looks pretty cool like this, but it can look super shiny like this. So I don't know if I'll make it like that or or just leave it as it is. I like it. It's not great. But it's uh, it's quite cool. The only thing I'll have to do is spray paint the letters and then wipe the paint so the black just stays on the letters yeah um, putting it back takes a long time because uh, I like everything to be perfect the screws to be nicely cleaned and all that but I'm glad it got to this stage where the engine is actually on the bike it's not fixed yet but it's getting there now I was cleaning these spacers these go here, one here and one there, one there. yeah I'm glad that this is on the bike uh, what I'll have to do is clean the chain also and open it up and put it back in there. Then after do the cylinder head. Uh, the good news is I have the the valve grinding kit. But that'll be later tomorrow or whenever I wake up. The pistons are here, the rings, everything's clean. I just need to clean this. Give it a nice spray. This is sprayed. It's already. It's almost. It's getting there. It's almost there.